here for a studio visit? Come on in. In the morning I will rise. I will walk with my head up high. I will rise and sing my song. With my eyes up to the sky. I will sing it loud and clear. I know for certain that people could fly. I will sing it proud and strong. If they could get over, so can I. In the morning I will rise. I will walk with my head up high. I will rise and sing my song. With my eyes up to the sky. This is Connie Angel. This is my studio, and I welcome you. This is my little corner where all the paints are kept, and coincidentally, so is the mess. <laughs> and I keep some of my inspirational books here, books that inspire me, some of the paintings that really touch me that I've created or that I've collected from other artists kind of get placed into that inspirational corner. There's my girl. Isn't she lovely? I really do love uh, borrowing from other eras of art. In this case, uh, that's like 1940s and 50s pinup art that I'm kind of reminiscing on in that bird piece up above. This one's a multi-layered um, piece that's part printmaking. And these are some little prints that I do on wood uh, when I'm doing my market days, which are crucial in getting my work out there in the public. Um, I, I over the years I've liked to I've appreciated creating work that's accessible. So I will create work that someone who's a college kid perhaps can afford at twenty bucks, and years later, believe it or not, <coughs> that same kid will collect original art. Um, they they're probably not kids by then. Maybe they've grown up. They've graduated from college and they're ready to buy, uh, you know, create a new collection and they can remember buying that $20 piece of art from me, uh, that they fell in love with at an art show. Finally, Hamer, who, who isn't inspired by her? She's amazing. This is one of the books that I've done, um, last year, uh, by first time author, ML Marakin. Wonderful book. You can go get that off the shelf. Here's another little piece about a little boy. I'll sing it proud and strong. I think I get off, but so can I. I look up on my philanthropy. I see the gifts pass down to me. I know I can be anything. This freedom is my legacy. There's nothing that I cannot do. Seen it what we have here, your legacy. Can't really talk about this book without talking about some of the symbolism within the book. The King Protea flower uh, actually played a, a big role in a lot of the imagery in the book. Um, some people are not aware that this flower uh, is symbolic in Africa of the crown. Uh, it has its origin in Greek mythology and has been around on Africa for over three million years. So it's a prehistoric plant. No man can I hinder me. This freedom is my legacy. I got love, love, intellect, intellect, determination, determination, courage. I got brilliance, brilliance. You may have noticed a certain aura around certain individuals throughout the book. It's very important to me because I wanted to symbolize the energy and the resilience and the strength of character um, and the light within the people. I would have to say that this was one of my favorite pages to do throughout the whole book. What I meant to bring across was Mother Earth's nurturing of the planet and uh, Mother Africa. It's just um, like almost like a warm embrace uh, and a strength of our ancestry transcending time. 
But also I wanted to show uh, the symbolic kola nut, which is very prominent in Africa. It's a beautiful pink opaque nut. It's traditional as well as medicinal and is a sign of love and peace and dialogue with God. I'd like to say thank you so much for this opportunity. I, you know, when I first was approached uh, with this book and I read the manuscript, I was blown away. First of all, I, I immediately caught on to the fact that we are finally, finally we have Shelley, an author who's willing to tell the truth about our history and to show it from a completely different perspective, a, a perspective of pride and resilience. <sighs> Imagine that, you know, and, and to be able to have the opportunity to uh, create the illustration as a visual person, especially, I need to be able to see in order to match the words sometimes, you know, sometimes I like to be able to uh, envision the narrative as well. That's why I love children's books, even as a grown up. <laughs> um, and I want children to see this. I want children to, and, and adults, to see this book that we've been needing all of this time. I mean, it, it, it's a, it's, it's about reaching the my, the milestone of capturing or snatching back our own narrative and telling our story from our own perspective. And it's, it's not a perspective of a slave. I've, you know, it's a perspective of a group of people who have been enslaved and have taken that experience. And just like some of the, you know, parts of our own history down to the nature of our motherland and the history there, We've stayed resilient, even after all of those, the madness and the chaos and this, the frightening parts of our history. We have been able to rebuild it um, literally from the foundation up in an entirely foreign place uh, initially and then until now. And uh, it speaks volumes you know, when you really are able to see and read about the strength and resilience of a people, it speaks volumes, um, and uh, it's powerful. You know, and, and that's, those are my exact thoughts when I first read this book, and it gives me great honor to have had the opportunity to illustrate um, something that my children and their children's children will value. Uh, for many years to come. Thank you so much. Determination, determination, courage. I've got brilliance, brilliance, ingenuity, ingenuity, strength, strength, grace, and dignity. I got love. Oh, you know I got love. Intellect, intellect.